Hello and welcome back to yet another video on vectors. This will be the last one in our series on vectors and we will be focusing on vector naming. That is naming vectors so that each element within a vector has a name or a reference or you can even call it an index. And this makes it far easier to work with vectors and with data that come in the form of vectors and this actually leads into more complex data structures and naming the rows and columns of two-dimensional data structures that we will be learning about in the future. So I'm not going to be using our notebook for this lecture because this is going to be a quick video. We're going to be using the console but we will continue using our notebook in most of the rest of our videos. So when we create a vector, let's create an example. It's always best to work off of examples. X is a vector of length three containing the elements one, two, and three. We've already established this by now, right? We can print it out. We can write print X. We can write length X. We can ask if there's any missing values in x, false, so on and so forth. Now, when we print out x, we just get the elements or the values themselves. Now, in this case, we don't really have much of a problem because the elements are very self-explanatory. They have a inherent order and they're ordered based on that inherent order. It's from, you know, lowest to it's from the smallest to the highest number. And it just makes sense. It starts from one, as you would expect, you know, any counting system to start from. And, you know, we're, we're content. However, vectors can contain any sort of value. They don't have to be ordered. They don't have to be numeric. They don't have to be nice and clean like this. And so it's very beneficial to have the possibility of naming elements in the vector so that even if there is no innate order or even if it's very hard to ascertain from just looking at the contents what's going on, we can look at the names and get a better understanding of what we're seeing. So let's first check to see if this vector has any names. And we do that by using the names function in R names and as you know functions come in with parentheses and we provide the arguments within the parentheses now in this case we want to find or we want to check to see if the vector x has any names so let's go ahead and put x in between the parentheses and we get null so there are no names associated with the vector x now, let's change that. Let's assign a name to each element within X. Let's say we can name the first element A, the second element B, and the third element C. So R provides us with access to the alphabetical letters, which is very useful in many cases when you're dealing with the alphabet because just you know how we can create ranges of numbers like this with ease you should be able to do that with letters right because we as humans understand that there's like there's an ordering to letters but you know programming languages they don't know what letters are they can't even differentiate between capital and lowercase letters right so r provides us with a vector that comes with the base r install called letters and this is just a vector, very simple character vector of all the letters starting from A to Z. And if we actually write letters in capital letters, then we get the same, but this time using the capital letters. And this allows us to be, you know, to index data based on letters. If we need to, we can get ranges of data. If you want to get the first 10 letters of the alphabet in capital, in, as capital letters 
then we can just specify a range of 1 to 10 just as you specify a range for subsetting a vector this is a vector so we're just doing the same thing and you get the first 10 letters back so in, in our case the vector we want to name is of length 3 so we want to use the first three letters of the alphabet let's go ahead and get the first three letters those are the first three letters of the alphabet and we want to name the vector so remember how x had no names we can actually specify the names of a vector by assigning the values we want to represent the names of that vector to the result of the names function with that vector as a parameter so when we go ahead and do this right nothing changed here on our screen because all we're doing is an assignment and remember assignments they don't by default print anything but what changed here was this became a named vector to see the difference let's create a y which is an unnamed vector so this is just a normal integer vector whereas the x vector is now a named vector so it has names well how do we see the names let's print the vector to the screen and now we can see the names of the vector now it's very important to draw our attention here to the fact that a b and c are not are not elements of a vector they are not elements of the vector at all so do not think of this as a two-dimensional data structure this is not a matrix this is not some data structure where you have two rows and three columns that is not the case it's very important a b and c are the names associated with the first second and third elements of this vector and to make sure of that we can use the names function once again and we and now we get in return a vector of the names associated with that vector so the result of the names function when there are names to a vector is a vector that contains the names of that vector so that's how we access the names of the vector but the vector itself contains the elements one two and three now if we would like to change the names we do the exact same thing uh, let's change them to lowercase letters for example let's go back up i'm using the up arrow to go back through my history of commands in the console and now let's change the names to lowercase letters i'm sorry i wasn't supposed to print the names function i was supposed to print x so as you can see the names have changed and we can confirm this by using the names function and there we go we get a vector of the names of the vector and that's how you specify names there is another way to actually specify names within a vector and that is to assign names to each individual element while you're creating the vector itself using the c convention if you remember one way to so let's create an example vector and we can actually name Let's say that we want to make a vector with elements four, five, and six, and we want to name them D, E, and F. So D would be the name of the first element. So D equals, we would write, but in reality, that this in this case, we're just assigning a name to four. So the element here is four, and the name of that element within the vector A is the letter D, and E is the name for the number five, and f is the name for the number six so this is actually a numeric vector with elements four five and six but the names happen to be d e and f right we can see that a is named it's a numeric vector four five and six are the contents of this vector but when we print out the names of a we get e, d e and f which we can subsequently change by you know 
giving it another vector, we can say A, B, and C. And now the names of A has, have changed to A, B, and C, and so on and so forth. See you in the next video.